Hey guys, welcome back to the JTL channel and this is your match review of Germany 2, Hungary 0. Germany get 6 points out of 6 in their first two games and as it stands they're obviously going to go through to the knockout stages of the Euros. Obviously they're the first team to do so, so congratulations to them. Um, look, they got 6 points out of 6, they've gotten the job done. It was one of those games where not the easiest um of games for them of course it was never going to go the same way it would have gone in the game against Scotland because Hungary are simply a better side than Scotland and um Germany were probably never going to put up the same levels of performance um in this game than they did in the game against Scotland so of course it was a tough game they got the job done it wasn't you know the most fantastic game of football you ever watch. It was a decent game of football. You know, Hungary, I thought, played well. They gave it their all. They gave it a good shot. They probably should have scored, if if I'm being completely honest. They, in, d Based on the chances they had, they definitely should have scored, in my opinion. High, high, high chances. I mean, they did more in 25 seconds than Scotland did the whole game. So, credit to them in terms of that, you know. Um, Germany kicked off and then, like, you know... They kicked off in such a weird way. They lost the ball straight away. Um, and then Hungary, long ball over the top. Um, the ball ends up going out to number 20, I think it was, Salai. I think that's his name. Um, or Shalai. Um, apologies if I've pronounced the name wrong, of course. But ball goes out to him. Um, he nearly gets to it, but Neuer gets to it first. And look, Germany it started off a bit slow. But, you know, as per usual... You know, they set up the same way. Crows in the back three. Mit Mittelstadt, I've now got the name of their left back. I didn't get it the last video. But Mittelstadt, I'm pretty sure is how you say his name. Kimmich, Kimmich, sorry. Were the two full backs just out wide. You had the um, three number 10s in Gundogan, who was brilliant today. Musiala, who was really good today. Wurz was okay today. Um, Andrik was decent, you know, defensive number six. Crows, like I said, dropped in the back three. Havertz today wasn't that good today, in my opinion. He had a good first half where I thought, you know, um, Rudiger's passing today, by the way, was absolutely quality. And many times Rudiger would actually find him in behind. Um, and that's one thing I do like about this Germany side. They don't just pass, 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 pass. Of course, they've got the technical players to just pass you to death and pass their way to a goal, pass the ball into the net. You know, with Cruz, Musiala, Wurz, Gundogan, of course. But they can also run in behind. And, and, and I think that's the difference as to why Havertz plays. He may not be the most clinical striker. But I think the reason why he plays over a full Krug is because of the movement and the flexibility that he gives to the other three players that are behind him. You know, the movement um, that all four players do give to the team. It's absolutely brilliant. None of them are ever static. Um, they don't stick to the same position. They're very flexible. They're very adapt ad adaptable to the game that is being played. Because Hungary today, I'm not going to lie to you, the difference between them and Scotland was, one, they just had better quality in general all across the field. And they were more cohesive as a team. And they understood what to do. They understood each other's roles and, they, and their own roles. And they gave Crows time on the ball, of course. But in the first half, a lot of the time when Musiala was on it, for, for, even though he was good, Gundogan was good, but it wasn't an easy game for these guys, you know, Scotland made it easy for them, you know, Hungary did not make it easy for them, every time those guys got the ball, the Hungary players, onto them straight away, you know, pressing them, you know, really getting tight to them and trying to win the ball back, and that was really good from Hungary, they were aggressive, they were brave, they were tenacious, they were trying to move the ball forward, they had many, many good opportunities to sort of go on the attack, they just like that final decision making in the final third, like a lot of teams in this tournament have. Um, but Germany's quality prevails eventually. You know, they were still dominating majority of the possession. Musiala was still picking up pockets, still going past players. The guy's close control and dribbling is just out of this world. Um, what a player. Gundogan's movement, brilliant. I mean, the guy is such an intelligent footballer. And, you know, we're going to talk about him later on because obviously he did score. But what a player. Verse, like I said, he was all right. He done his thing a little bit, you know, a bit quieter than the other two. But it is what it is. But they eventually get that first goal, man. Now, and this is what I mean when I say they were adaptable and flexible. 
they were obviously on paper and even at the beginning of the games, right? Musial is actually the right sided number 10, and you've got Virtu is the left sided number 10. But because these two players are so good, they end up just swapping at times. In fact, there's times where they end up both playing at the same side at the same time. There were times in this game and even in the Scotland game where you see Musiala's on the left, Verts is on the right. There's times where you see both Musiala and Verts on the left. You see Musiala and Verts on the right at the same exact time, you know? So it's like those two being able to play so close to each other and just they just understand each other on the field. And every time they get the ball, they know where the other is alongside Gundogan and these players. And you saw it in the first goal, Verts is now like a right-sided number eight because he's dropped deep a little bit. He collects the ball from the centre-back, drives with the ball, passes it to Musiala, who's in between the lines. Musiala, once again, just takes his time. You know, he, he sorts himself out because when he took the touch, the ball was kind of stuck under his feet, but he managed to get it out, took his time, laid a nice pass to Gundo. Gundo, he came off his knee. The defender actually dealt with it really well, but Gundo just slightly bumped him. It wasn't intentional at all. Um, it was not a foul. It's a little bit soft, you know. It was like a 50-50 type challenge thing. Um, and Gundogan, it wasn't even intentional any, intentional anyway. You know, there was no intent. It wasn't enough force in it. Um, but the defender loses balance. Gundogan fights to get the ball back. Credit to Gundo because that situation looked dead. It looked like Hungary were just going to get the ball back and um, proceed with things. Um, the keeper, I think, was poor because in that moment when the defender falls, I think the keeper has to go for it. I think he has to go for it. I think the keeper, a little bit scared in my opinion, um, hesitant, you know. But Gundogan, he fights to get the ball back, scrambles with a couple of defenders, gives the ball to Musiala. Once again, the ball is stuck under his feet, Musiala, but he still finds that time to strike the ball, takes the deflection, hits the roof of the net, back of the net. 1-0, Germany, here we go. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they're 1-0 up, they're cruising, um, Hungary, still have a few chances, they're pulling a couple good crosses, they're still a threat. Um... You know, Germany are susceptible to the counter-attack. That's something people have to look out for. You know, I did say in my last review that a weakness of theirs potentially could be defensively because they just don't keep clean sheets. They did keep a clean sheet today. So fair play to them in terms of that. But with the amount of men they leave forward, it's like they leave themselves with only Tony Rudiger, Jonathan Tarr and Tony Kroos. You know, because Andurik... Weirdly enough, even though he's there as a six to protect Cruz, in the build-up play, naturally, he's actually higher than Cruz. And he's in the middle of the pitch, whilst Cruz drops into the back three as the progressive midfielder, as the orchestra, as the man to dictate the play. But then at the same time, if they lose the ball high, they need to really rely on Andrik to sort of get the ball as quickly as possible. Or just Musiala, Wurtz, Gundogan, or Kimmich you know, or middle stat, you know, when they lose the ball high up, they need to make sure they get it back quickly because I feel like against teams, they could potentially suffer in terms of if they bring that many players forward and they've only got those three players that I mentioned, Rudy Gattar and Crows at the back, say they lose the ball, right? If they don't win that ball back within a couple seconds and the, a better team than Hungary progresses that ball forward much more quickly, makes better decisions, they could be in trouble. That So that is something to look out for with Germany because at times they were caught out in that way. It's just Hungary didn't have the quality to make that final decision. So it is what it is. Um, they did score right at the um, right at the halftime, um, basically whistle, um, right at halftime, but it was obviously offside. So yeah, rightly so. And I must say, credit to this new um, semi-automated um, system um, offside system that's been brought into place. It's making, oi, they're, they're wasting no more than like 20, 30 seconds on these. And I think I'm being kind of, I, I think I'm, I think I'm doing them a disservice by saying that, you know, I can't lie. I think they, they definitely take quicker time, you know, to sort of, you know, um, make decisions on offsides and stuff like that. So, you know, the fact that I'm saying, oh, it takes them about 20, 30 seconds, it probably takes them about 10, 15 seconds to figure out whether, you know, a player was offside or not. So the fact that VAR has not been such a talking point yet in um, the Euro so far is very refreshing and very nice to see. Hopefully in the Premier League next season, I'm not sitting here talking about a lot of VAR decisions going against Chelsea's way. Or even going for Chelsea's way, 
that shouldn't have gone Chelsea's way, but hey, it is what it is. We go to the second half, a bit more of the same. Germany dominate. Hungary again, they're trying, they're trying, they're trying, they're trying, but the quality just wasn't good enough. And eventually, Germany do get that second goal. Um, would I say it was coming? I wouldn't say it was coming, but at the same time, I would say it was well needed because it felt like Hungary were putting the pressure on. And as the game went on, I was starting to think, if Germany don't get the second goal soon, I can see Hungary just getting an equaliser out of nowhere. Um, but they didn't. Germany do get the ball. They're just passing it about. They're, they're patient. They're moving it left to right. Eventually, the ball goes out to Musiala. He drives the ball, gives it to Mittelstadt. Um, Mittelstadt puts the ball in. He picks out Gundogan, who's in a very good position. No one's picking him up. Gundogan, left foot, first time into the bottom corner. Clutch as always. And he seals the win for his team. And Gundogan, may I just say, just a, a mini segment on Gundogan. Like, what a player, man. You know, he's actually one of the few players that I've watched play, right? And take this into account, guys. I'm very young. So, you know, I'm only 21 years old. So it's like I've not watched, you know, the absolute legends of the game in the 2000s, the 90s, you know, um, even to an extent, the late 2000s, you know, definitely the early 2000s. I wasn't watching football because either I was a baby or I wasn't even born yet. Bruv. You get what I'm saying? So I've been mainly watching football since like the 2010s onwards you know what i'm saying um near mid 2010s so you know based on what i've seen in my life of watching football gundogan is one of the very few players that i've seen that's able to play the number six role the number eight role and the number 10 role to a very high level very high level if you ask him to be that number 10 that crashes the box and you want him to score goals he can do that easy work. If you want him to be that number six that dictates the play and finds the passes to the players that are in between the lines and be like, and, and be like a deep line playmaker and, di and just be that dictator, be that orchestra, can do that as well. Number eight, asking him to be box to box, make an influence in both boxes. Use your dribbling skills. Use your link up play. Use your range of passing. Absolutely brilliant. His first touch is slick. His chemistry and his understanding of the game is just absolutely brilliant. And I must say, he's definitely one of my favourite midfielders that I've ever watched in it. So, Gundogan, what a player, man. Genuinely, what a player. I was waxing um, lyrical, um, waxing lyrical, sorry, about Tony Crow's last game. Today it's about Gundogan because for me, he was probably the man of the match, in my opinion. Musiala was close. But for me, Gundogan's intelligence, um, the, the, the guy's clutch, he's intelligent, his movement, um, his link-up play, his first touch, his passing, his shooting ability. Like, he's got the full package. The full, full package. 33 years old as well. I did say it was a mistake, Man City letting him go. So, yeah, fair play to him. And, yeah, Jeremy, you see the, ga the game out? They win two out of two, six out of six points. They're basically through. Will they top the group? I think they will top the group. Um, Switzerland obviously plays Scotland next. I won't be able to watch that game, unfortunately, as I unfortunately have things to do. And that game will be going on whilst I'll be doing activities. So, yeah, guys. Um, sorry that a video will not come out on that game, but at least the video is coming out on this game right here. So yeah, guys, um, that's basically it for the video. There's not really much to say, like in terms of who disappointed. I mean, Kai Havertz wasn't great today. Um, like I said, Gundogan was brilliant. Musiala, solid. Um, Mittelstadt, the left back, really good today. Nice assist. Kimmich was solid. Um, Rudy Guitar, solid. Um, Andrik, solid. Um, Crows, decent game again. So yeah, one thing they do need to worry about though is the, is the yellow cards though. Um, that's something because as much as their starting 11 is fantastic their bench um, I did say last game they had a good bench in terms of like attacking options the likes of Thomas Muller Fulkrug um, even Leroy Sane although Leroy Sane I must say normally on paper you think Leroy Sane good option off the bench but I'm not gonna lie his cameo today stunk man oh it was the guy is he looks washed I don't want to say he's washed in it but He's way past his peak based on what I'm seeing here. You know, the guy in 2024, Leroy Sane 
in 2024 has been nothing short of a disgrace. Because I've watched a lot of Bayern this year. I've watched a lot of Bayern, mainly because Thomas Tuchel is one of my favourite managers in the game currently. And I wanted him to do well. And the fact that Leverkusen were going to win the league and his reputation was going to be tarnished. I was rooting for Bayern to win the Champions League. So anyway, so I was watching a lot of Bayern this year. And Leroy Sané in 2024, the guy scored one goal since October of last year. And that was against Real Madrid. Other than that goal against Real Madrid, which was his first goal since October, I think it was. Or like September or something like that. All I know is that he had scored like, he had an atrocious, he had an atrocious like goal scoring record. It was so bad. Here's cameo today. Dribbling, not there. Decision making, not there. Passing, not there. He's not even that quick. It's just a bit concerning for me. And for me, if he continues putting on those cameos, boy, is it, is there any point bringing him on? You know, I couldn't start bringing on full crew. He can definitely make a difference. Thomas Muller can definitely make a difference. I'm starting to think players like Undav might be able to make a better difference than the likes of Leroy Sane. So he needs to sort himself out on that perspective. And what I wanted to say before we end the video was Germany needs to be careful of the yellow cards. That's now both their main centre-backs, Rudiger and Jonathan Tarr, on yellow cards. If they get a yellow card again, they miss the next game. Now, luckily for them, if they do top this group, who they face in the round of 16 will be whoever comes second place out of England, Serbia, Denmark, and Slovenia. So, okay, say one of them, alongside the likes of Andalik and I think Kimmich as well, or is it um, uh, their left back, Mitchell Stapp. Um, They have four players on yellow cards, Rudiger, Tar, um, Andalik, and Mitchell Stapp. If one of them get yellow cards, maybe in the next game against Switzerland, then maybe they'll get away with it because whoever they face um, in the round of 16, will likely not be England because England will probably top their group. But they need to be careful of that, man, because that could, that could, you know, that could cost them down the line. You don't want to miss an Antonio Rudiger for like a quarter final game. You know what I'm saying? He, he's he's one. He's the best centre back in the world, as far as I'm concerned, alongside Virgil Van Dijk and that. So they gotta be careful of that, man, because um yeah, suspensions and all that crap. So yeah, that's it for the video, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with more Euros content. Up the Chelsea. Don't know why I just said that, but yeah, up the Chelsea anyway. Peace.